Jeremiah chapter 16. The word of the Lord came also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife. This is the only man in the Bible commanded by God not to marry. If you're going to base your religion upon this one half of earth, you are taking scripture out of context. We're going to read about why he's not to marry. Jeremiah is going to become an illustration to Israel. And Paul writes one of the things of the heretic of the church will be, there will be uh, religions, there will be churches that will come up uh, forbidding men to marry. Paul also says in Corinthians, he'd rather have men be like him, either he was married or widowed, we're not sure. But under strong advisement, he says, you know, he'd rather be single as a man. But if you can't contain, marry. You have not sinned. Neither shall thou have sons or daughters in this place. Uh oh. It is forbidden by God to have sons and daughters without having a wife. How's that? In order to have sons and daughters, a man needs a wife. We have a name for that. It's called adultery. It's called bastards. It's in the Bible. For thus saith the Lord concerning the, the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, Jerusalem, Judah, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begat them in the land. The mothers bear the children and fathers begat them. You got the definition from the Bible. They shall die of grievous death. So Jeremiah, don't get married because the men are going to be single. They're going to be widows. You're not going to have children because they're not going to have children. They're going to be without spouses and they're going to be without children. That's a great thing to build your religion on, huh? Telling your men not to be married, your men of God not to be married. Well, read the contents. It's judgment coming. It's death. Well, I guess... When you tell your men of your religion not to get married, um, I guess you're bringing forth death and destruction. Luke 23, 27 to 31 as a reference here. They shall die of grievous deaths. Not just death, grievous. They shall not be lamented. There's going to be no sorrow, no funeral. Neither shall they be buried. It's going to be under upon the ground because it says, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. Now that's an interesting word. Refuge. You know what the refuge brings forth? Brings forth a smell. Polluted. They shall be consumed by the sword, war. And by famine, lack of food and water. And their carcasses, or carcasses, however you want to say it, shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Jezebel. Remember, she was eating up dogs and became dog poop. I got a message somewhere on one of the things don't step in Jezebel. And to a Jew, not having a burial, man, that, that's just sacrilegious. They did it for all the kings. It was made note. They made a burning for him. They buried him amongst his fathers. For thus saith the Lord, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan its cry, tears, bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from this people. Troubles, anxieties, fears, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercies. No peace, no loving kindness, and no mercies. They are just in the pit of doom.
Both the great and the small shall die in this land, everyone. They shall not be buried. Spoken twice, verily, verily. Neither shall men lament for them, because they're going to be dead. Nor cut themselves. That's what some religious people do. For penance. They cut themselves for the dead. You know, you cut the jack o' lantern for dead. You cut a tree down for the dead. You cut yourselves for dead. Nor make themselves bald for them. And then they were shaving their heads for dead. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in the morning. Ripping their skin off, rip, ripping them apart. To comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. I have Proverbs 31, verses 6 and 7 here. You're not going to get no comfort. Your pills, your alcohol, your rituals. Are not going to take. You're just, you're just going to be just deaf, and you're just going to die of the death. Death. Thou shalt not also go into the house of feasting. Boy, we flipped the coin over. To sit with them to eat and to drink. We flipped that coin completely over. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold. I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride. Boy, we switched over coins, didn't we? We went from a few, no funerals to no weddings. No joy, no love, no peace. No feasting, just utter terror. And shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words. They shall say unto thee, this is what they're going to respond to, Wherefore has the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? It sounds good. They don't really mean it. Because I read the end of Jeremiah. They don't repent. Then shalt thou say unto them. Okay, you ask the question, God's going to give you the answer. And it may not be the answer you want. Because your fathers have forsaken me. Ooh, ooh that's a sin. Saith the Lord. And have walked after other gods. Ooh, that's a sin. And have served them. Ooh, that's a sin. And have worshipped them. Uh-oh, that's a sin. And have forsaken me. Ooh, that was already mentioned twice. And have not kept my law. That's a sin. Again, we see the difference between walking, serving, and worshipping. And they were doing all three for gods and not God. They were following the gods, they were doing things for the gods, and they were giving reverence to the gods. There are people who go to church and reverence God, but they won't walk or serve Him. See, how do you walk after God? You find out what the Bible says to do, and you do it. How do you serve God? You do what He tells you to do. How do you worship God? You put Him on the pedestal. And kept the law. That's Old Testament. That's Jewish. That's not church. And ye have done worse than your fathers. Ooh, that's a sin. For behold, he walked every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Ooh, that's a sin. Doing what their heart. Let your heart be your God. That's the worst words 
or encouragement you can give somebody to do. Yet when you go see a shrink, he never deals with the heart issue. Find all the places in the Bible you find brain. Therefore will I cast you out of this land, and he will, into a land that ye know not. Babylon. Jeremiah's already gone there. Neither nor your fathers. Babylon is fairly new country. And there shall ye serve other gods day and night. How do you know that's true? When I play the music, fall down and worship. You say, well, the three Hebrew boys didn't worship, but how about the rest of the Jews? What did they do? You tell me that there was only three Hebrew boys in the whole land of Babylon? Uh huh. Where I will not show you favor. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's old news. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, Ezra, Nehemiah, and from all the lands whether he had driven them. That be when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. I will bring them I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So he's not going to utterly destroy them all. There's that promise. There's that judgment. And there's that promise. Now if God was all finished and all through with the Jews as some churches teach us today. Jeremiah 16, 15 is a broken commandment of God and God is no more God. If he's finished and had it with the Jews, he is no longer a God of long suffering. He is no longer a God of loving kindness. He's no, neither nor God of mercies. He's a holy and righteous God, and that's why Israel's getting what they're getting today. They're getting correction from the Father. But he's not done with them. Behold, I will send for many fishers. Amos 9.14 saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. So what did Jesus tell his disciples? Follow me, be fishers of men. So what do people do stupidly? They put on their car the fish symbol. That's not church. That's Jewish. That's Jeremiah 16, 16. Plus that fish is a reptile. You know what, you know what, uh, the missing cherubim was? The dragon? The serpent? Jesus said to him, You are your father that. Uh -huh. You be careful what you put on your car. They shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. Hunter uses a bow. What's that Antichrist said to have in Revelation? And they shall hunt for they shall hunt them from every mountain from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. God's gonna get their attention. They ain't gonna hide from God. For my eyes are upon all their ways. You can't hide from God. They are not hid from my face. You can't hide from God. Neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. God sees exactly what they're doing. And he sees what you're doing. And, I, and first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they are God's people. He gave them what to do and what not to do. And they disobeyed. 
Why didn't Cain get the death penalty for his murder? There was no law about murder. Until after Noah. See, we with the Bible know better. We ought to know better. In a nation where you can get a Bible in a store online, on the computer, you are without excuse. Because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. We read that was pig's flesh, swine, mouse, or mice. They weren't obeying the dietary laws. Maybe they had clamshells all over the place. I don't know. O oh Lord, my strength, my fortress, Jeremiah speaking, my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. Those that Jonah didn't want to deal with, ones that Peter didn't want to deal with. And shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. The false God. The false worship. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is is the Lord even though they're worshiping other gods the judgment that God will bring upon Judah and Jerusalem is to prove hey I'm God and there's no other That's it. if they only would repent and get right I mean they ask so what's our sins what's our trouble and God gives it to them and they won't get right <laughs> 